a message from God tonight. Pretty serious message. I'm putting the devil on notice now. Amen. On notice. That's what I'm doing. I believe this needs to be a fight in church. Amen. I believe we need to fight for one another. Yes. We need to fight the devil and not fight each other. Amen. 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 Wouldn't that be good? Amen. Yes, it would. Open your Bibles to 2 Thessalonians. I was so happy this morning. I, I didn't know that um, we were going out over the internet live during our service. And, and then my mama called. And in the background, I was over here at Bob Evans this afternoon. And in the background, I heard somebody just preaching up a storm. And uh, my mama lives down the border of Tennessee. And I thought, well, that's so good because she's 73 and she don't get out as much as she used to. And, and I thought, well, good. I'm glad she's listening to some preacher on, some, on a, a Sunday afternoon. And uh, she, I said, who are you listening to? And she goes, that's you. <laughs> I said, really? And she said, yeah, that's you. And I thought, that is so wonderful. And um, folks, don't be afraid to obey the Lord. I think before we came in tonight, we'd seen where 80 people already have watched this morning's service. I give the Lord praise for that. We ought to give Him praise. Amen. Amen. And, um, you know, it takes every bit of the body of Christ to be that body of Christ. And every one of you have a place where you can work and do something for the Lord. How many come because they need to hear from the Lord? Amen. And he's ready to get into God's Word. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, and I'll say some things quite often. You'll get used to some, some of my little things. But we are begotten by the Word. Yes. Amen. That means that we were birthed into this kingdom through the Word of God. How many Amen. knows that? Amen. Amen. I'm going to be reading now 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And then we're going to turn over to the book of Ephesians. I think it's chapter 6. And just read one verse. But I want you to go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Maybe this is familiar with some. may not be with others. But we're living in a very dangerous time. How many know that? There are a lot of evilness abounding in our land. I've once heard, and it's not a biblical quote, but I have heard that all it takes for sin to abound is for good people to do nothing. Amen. And I have found there is a lot of truth in that. Amen. And even though that's not word for word Bible, that you'll find somewhere in there, and maybe what I'm about to read tonight, you'll find something very similar to that. I believe that the church has a purpose. Yes. I believe the church has power. Amen. I just do now. I believe that God's church is not a powerless church. Amen. I believe that He told them to tarry in that upper room yes. until they receive power, not from this world, right. but power from on high. Amen. A power that's supernatural. Yes. Many of us have lived in a natural world, and naturally, there's nothing wrong with that. We're all born Amen. naturally, but either a man or a woman. Regardless of what some may think they are, that is the truth. You're either a man or a woman, naturally. But in the Spirit, the Bible says there is neither male nor female in Christ. There is just a new creature in Christ. And I believe that creature. Woo! My goodness, I'm going to slow back down. I can't even get going. My message, but that new creature has power. Yes. That's why I'm serving the enemy this yes. message tonight. Amen. I'm coming to let the devil know this church is here. Yes. Now that means something too. Many may look at it and just say, well, it's just another church on another corner. But the devil don't look at it that way. You mention the name of Jesus around the devil, and that devil will begin to tremble. That's the power of the name of Christ. Let's read now. Second Thessalonians, Becky, I could use some water. Chapter 2, verse 1 through 9, the Bible says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto Him, that you be not soon shaken in mind yes. or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, Amen. nor by letter as from us, yes. as that the day of Christ is at hand. Amen. How many believe that That's today? That's right. But look at verse 3. Let no man deceive you by yes. any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Oh, praise God. How many knows what we're talking about there? Amen. Let's just go ahead and throw the word Antichrist right out there. Out of that verse right there, number three, that man of sin be revealed, that son of perdition or that son of hell. Verse number four, who opposeth. Now listen, and you'll, re you'll realize the time you live in today. 
who opposeth and exalteth himself yes. above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God set up in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Anybody ever heard this read before? Amen. Look down there at verse 5. Remember ye not that I that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. Yes. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. We're going to come back to this part in a moment. Verse number 7. For the mystery of iniquity yes. doth already work. Only he who now let up will let until he be taken out of the way. He that now let up will let until he be taken out of the way. Yeah. Folks, there are powers. Yeah. There are powers that we don't even see yeah. that are at work in yeah. this nation today. That devil's been yeah. around yeah. for thousands of years. Yeah. He's, been, he's, he's been plotting and scheming, yeah. but I've come to tell you tonight, I'm yeah. serving him on this yeah. because of the church. Yeah. My God, let's read on, and then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the spirit of his mouth. He may think he's bad, but when the Lord shows up just with a with, with a word, how many knows how much power is in the word of God? How many how many believes that? There's power in this word, aren't there? There's power. There's so much power that a long time ago, there was a voice that said, let there be my God. And it was. He said, let there be light. And light appeared. That's now he's going to defeat the enemy, but look in verse 8, And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him yes. who is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Yes. Yeah, the devil's got power. Right. Some people say he don't. Yes. I've seen a generation of church that went through this telling me how much power they had, and then Monday they're so beaten that they're calling you on the phone, oh brother, I, I just don't know how I'm going to make it. And I'm thinking, well, yesterday you was shouting around the church how he was under your feet. The old words are pretty, but they're very vain. Yes, they are when we speak them when there's no authority behind them. When there's no anointing and no spirit of God that comes with those words, I remember a story in the Bible where some of the sons of a, of a priest went down to cast out a devil out of a woman. How many remembers that? How many sons were there? There were seven. You think seven men could stand up against one woman. But when that woman's got a devil in her, the Bible says she whipped them seven, stripped them of their clothes, and threw them out in the street naked. Now there's power, I'm telling you tonight, but there's another force uh, that's not to be reckoned with. It's the name of Christ. Now listen a moment. I want to go to Ephesians. Amen. I'm going to try to slow down. I just, I feel like just preaching for a while. But look at Ephesians 6 and verse 12. Very powerful verse. Then we'll come back to Thessalonians. Amen. For we wrestle not against yes. flesh and blood. The battle's got to stop between God's people. Amen. We don't Amen. wrestle against flesh and blood. Yes. Amen. I'm flesh and I'm blood. But there's spirit. Amen. You are, you know what? Some of you identify it like this. You, you'll see it in your animals. You'll, you'll have a, a cat or you'll have a dog. And you'll talk about that dog is so good spirited. It wouldn't hurt nobody. It wouldn't, it's, it's, it's spirit. It's just me in general. You ever hear people talk like that? Just a, a good spirit about that person. You ever hear somebody say stuff like that? Because the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But look what it says. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. Oh, praise God. So what are we wrestling against? What is the battle for the church today? It's not the church down the street. Yes. It's not about my denomination yes. saved and yours is lost. Those days have got to stop. Yes. It's not about how many do you got and how many do we got. It ought to be do you got him. If you got him, you got everything. For the Bible says if you gained the whole world and lost your soul, what would it profit you? But if you have Jesus, my friend, you're more than a couple. 
conqueror. You and Jesus, they come to Martin Luther one day, and those that know the reformation of, of, of the Lutheran doctrine uh, all, all spawned through Martin Luther when he, when he uh, what was it, 97 or 99 disagreements he had with the church, and, and he went and tacked it on the church door. It takes something down in, in somebody to walk up to the church and say, folks, you just messed up. But whenever they did that, they went to Martin Luther's house and they knocked on his door and they said, Martin, it's you against the whole world. You know what his response was? Yeah. Then it's me against the whole world. My God, there ought to be power in the church today. That's right. Yes, Lord Jesus. He says, now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, in verse 1, and by our gathering together unto Him. Yes. There's coming a day after a while, folks. If you haven't made yourself ready, there's coming a day. If we went back to 1 Thessalonians in chapter 4, it's where you would read in there that the dead in Christ shall rise first, Amen. and those of us which are alive and remain shall be called up together to live with the Lord forever and ever and ever. Amen. There's coming a day after a while. He said, I beseech you. He said, I've come to get your attention. If I could just grab your attention for a few minutes. He said, I need to explain something to you. He said, the Lord is coming back. Yeah. And he said, I, I beseech you because there's going to be a gathering together on the hill. That church body, no matter where it's scattered at today, no matter if it's in Kentucky in an upper room or down in Florida or Tennessee, he's coming back for that church. Yeah. And he says... He says, don't, don't be troubled. Don't be shaken. Many are many getting that, that type of thing in their mind. Or be troubled. Neither in spirit. That's right. Boy, I'd like to preach for a little while right Amen. there. Because Rachel. we need people that are strong again yes. in our churches. Amen. Yes. We, we need people that, that will dig in right there and, and, and say, this is my ground. Yes. It, it, this is what God gave me. I, I'm not backing up no more. I'm, I'm just going to stand because that's Bible too. Having done all to stand, just stand there for. And this is where I make my stand. See, the devil don't want you steadfast in the faith because he resists the steadfastness in the faith. He I don't want you to just say, this is my pew. There ain't nobody else going to get this pew. This is my spot in God's house. He wants... My God, it takes power sometimes. Yeah. I heard I heard one of the sisters this morning say, boy, I hope next week ain't like this past week. I want to tell you something. You got power over this week. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you do. He said, I beseech you because the Lord's coming and there'll be gathering together. And he said, let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. That falling away, we've heard that all of our life, haven't we? Some people come and they'll say, Brother Robert, what's it going to be like in the last day? So is there going to be a great revival and everybody run back to the church? Or is there going to be a falling away and everybody run away from the church? I don't know. I, I know what I'm going to do. I, I'm going to stay in God's house. I, I'm going to keep the oil in my lamp. I'm going to keep my wick trimmed and say, here I am, Lord. If the trumpet sounds, I'm ready to go. The Bible says here, let no man deceive you. Why would he say that? Somebody was telling me today that they watched the special this morning about the mark of the beast because there's a plan that's plotted. It's been plotted since Calvary. Amen. I believe before Calvary, yes. I believe the enemy plotted to stop Calvary. That's why Herod sent out those. And then when they couldn't bind the Christ, when God made a way for him to escape from Mary and Joseph, he just decided he'd go killing every child. Yeah, we live in a generation like that. An evilness that will abound. Mm. The enemy had a plan. He thought he could, he could change. He could stop things. He went to Jesus. You remember? He went to him after he fasted in the wilderness. How many of you have ever been in a wilderness? Been where it's cold at night and it's hot during the day. That's what the desert's like. That wilderness place where Jesus was. And then he offered him everything. He offered, he took him to the pinnacle. I've seen some pastors that got the devil come in and offered them things. And where they at today when they run off with somebody or run off with the money and don't say, this is my place. And God give them the power to be able to resist every devil that'll come in. I'm telling you, there's a plan by the devil.
devil. He's Amen. after your life. Amen. Stay with me now. Amen. It shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed. The son of perdition. Let me put it to you in this. I'll, I'll paint a real pretty picture. Has America always been the way it's been? No. no. Why? They'll tell you and they'll convince you there's no need for the church. They'll try to shut you up. They'll try to take Christ out of Christmas. They'll take the, the, the nativity scene out of the courtyard square. You can't have the Ten Commandments posted anywhere in public. Do you know what the ruling from the Supreme Court was on the Ten Commandments? I know because we're from McQuarrie County, Kentucky. And it was McQuarrie County, Kentucky that filed the federal lawsuit that went all the way to the Supreme Court, the little town of 16,000 people where we're from. And you know what the Supreme Court said? That if you put the Ten Commandments in the school and the children read them, they might just do them. Amen. That is what the ruling came down. There is forces. We don't wrestle no Supreme Court men and women. We're wrestling a devil. We're I put him on notice tonight because he's waiting for more to fall away. Because the more the church falls away, every time we take a step backward, he takes one more forward. Oh, and I'll tell you one thing about the enemy. He don't like giving up anything. See, he didn't earn it. He's not entitled to it. But if he can convince you to give it to him, he claims hold to it. There's a devil to come in. He's worked on our families for a long time. He's worked on our... Tell me how it is. In the last what? Now, I, I'm not, I don't throw off on Republicans or Democrats. Sometimes I like either one of them. But you look how fast things have moved in 10 years. How many of you in this church, and I just to be real, ever thought that we would legalize yeah. same-sex marriage? Amen. Where's the power in the church? Yes. All them that want to come in and shout and run and hoop and holler and then go out and can't make a difference in their own family? That's not power in the church. Preach, Brother Robert. I'm talking about something that makes a change that people either get in or they get out. Yeah. Now what you got's real or you just know it ain't. I'm talking about a power because the enemy knows that if there's a falling away every time somebody quits, every time somebody gets out of the boat, every time somebody throws up their hand and said, I ain't in this thing no more, here comes the devil and he collects it. Amen. He said, no. He said, let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come. So they're coming and falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed. Because eventually, when it's all fell apart, you end up seeing it was the devil yes. that did it. Preachers ought to preach that way again, right. shouldn't they? Amen. Yes, they should. There's a need for it. But as soon as there's a falling away, here comes the devil. Right. Now look at four. Who opposeth? Because that's what he comes for. He comes against everything that's called God. Some of you come here. Some of you are trying to make up your mind. Am I going to stay? Am I going to put down my roots right here? Is this the church where God's leading me to? I can tell you one thing. You better get filled up with some power from on high. Because the devil will come into this place. Yes, he will. When people when cancer falls off somebody, you wait. Every devil will show up out there. Tell everybody that ain't real. People get saved and people get healed. People get delivered. Whenever there's more people off of heroin on this side of the street than on heroin on this side of the street, you watch, here come the devil, and you'll have to stand fast, and you'll have to put the devil on notice that I'm here, and I'm not about to back up. This is my ground. Right. Who opposes for exalt of himself all that is called God or is worshipped? So that he is God set up in the temple, God. That's what he wants. He won't stop till he gets it. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Oh, some people still waiting for the Antichrist to sit down in the temple in Jerusalem. Waiting for that third temple to be built. Very well may happen. Very well may. But son of you, let the devil sit down right there in that temple that you walked in here with. And if you don't take authority over that thing, well, I just can't help it. I don't know why he fights me so hard. He fights you so hard because you open a door to him. You ought to just kick him out of that and close that door behind him and just say, you're no longer welcome in this place. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. My God. And look what he's saying right here. He said, all that is called God. Oh, have you noticed what's happened in our nation? Mm -hmm. 
call God. Amen. I told people before, and it's just a true story, one of the fastest growing churches in America, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you know this story, is one that whenever they pass out hymnals, as you come through the door, they hand you a beer. It's called beer and hymnals. Now, I'm not preaching against beer or hymnals. I just don't think that the two of them go together. Amen. I don't think there's a place in that church. I know there's some denominations that don't have a problem with alcohol and all that kind of stuff. But as for me, I don't, I'm not going to pass you out a beer. You want a beer, you go two doors down. You want real power from God, you come through that door right there. You receive the Holy Spirit, not some bottle of spirit. I'm talking about something that will dwell in you. The Bible says, listen to me. Worship so that He is God. That's what He wants. That's what He told Adam and Eve. You'll be your own gods. That's why people in this generation are falling away. They'll turn to Oprah Winfrey. She'll become their prophetess. She'll tell them you're in control of your own destiny. Now, I, they, they, I, I, I've met plenty of people. They tune in to her gospel because she teaches you have control. You have authority. You control your own destiny. Tell that single mother that that man run out on her that you're in control of your own destiny. Tell that single dad trying to raise them kids because mama got on heroin and she ran off with three other pimps that you're in control of your own destiny. Just tell Oprah Winfrey the next time she drives, if she ever drives, and she gets a black tire, ask her did she cause that to happen or was it just some greater force in life? My God. Who opposes? Look at him. That of God. Shows himself... That he is God. There was a war in heaven, remember? Look at verse 5. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. Yes. And now ye know what withholdeth. How many's read this? That he might be revealed in his time. See, there's the full onslaught has not happened. That's right. There were skirmishes before the Civil War. Harper's Valley and all these things, if you know history. See, the, the, the battle that's being waged over our souls right now Amen. has not been put into array. No. It, it's kind of like the days of David. Whenever they stood on one mountain and the Philistines on another mountain and their giant walked down in the valley and said, send me a man. See, the enemy is still like singling out a church, don't he? Still like singling you out. That's why some of you, when you come, your spirit's been wounded because somebody made fun of you. Whenever you shout, people make fun of you. When you talk in tongues, they make fun of you. The enemy's still trying to single you out. But one day after a while, they'll come with something called the mark. They'll come into people that's been, been minimized and deceived and tell them, unless you take this thing, unless you worship a beast, unless you worship of image instead of worship the creator who created heavens and earth. You'll not have nothing in this world. I'd rather lose everything in this world than have God. Hey, devil ain't going to like this tonight. I'm serving notice on him, Sister Doris. Amen. We're here. Amen. Amen. I'm not falling away. Amen. I'm digging in deeper. Maybe some of you that's known me for a while know I, I'm, I'm 50 now. If I was 40, maybe it'd be different. But at 50, I'm a little wiser. Just a little bit. 10 years under my belt. And now I'm going to throw everything I got at the devil. I'm going to tell it. I'm saved. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now ye know what withholdeth. Let me tell you what withholdeth. The Spirit of God. Yes. You remember in the book of Job when, when Satan come in with the sons of God? And see, spirits always want to be around spirits. Right. It takes somebody. Yeah, they come, he come in with the sons of God. You get that anointing on your life, two or three of them start chasing you everywhere you go. That's all right. Just tell them stop every once in a while. Right. That's as far as you go. I, I'm going this way, but you can't go. Amen. That's the way you need to talk to the devil in your life. Right. Some of you, he talks to you, but you got to learn to talk to him. But he come there and, and he come before the throne of God. And, 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 and he said, I go to and throw upon the earth because the beat comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And you know he does. And God said, have you considered my servant Job? And what did the devil say? say, I can't touch him. Right. You've got a hedge around him. I can't. See, the devil don't have the authority over God's people. Oh, no, he don't. You listen to me. It says, and now you know what we're holding. I'll tell you why the devil ain't 
tore me and Becky's marriage apart because the Holy Spirit said, no, I'm not going to let you go that far. I'm going to let you fight for this once in a while. Find out of what they got trail, but you cannot have them. God forevermore. Yes, Lord. He did not let a will let until he'd be taken out of the way. There will be a time, though, in this nation. That's why I'm getting in. It's getting in time. I'm preaching good tonight. I'm just tired and worn out. But you listen to what I'm telling you now. He says, and now you know what withholdeth. Yeah, I know what withholdeth. The power of God. The power of God keeps Satan outside that door tonight. Yes, he will. That's why the Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, I'm going to preach. There's liberty. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. What's that mean? Well, I need a young man to run for me tonight. I'll just stand there and preach. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. My God. Woo. Get that boy raised. 10% right there. He did now let him. Look at verse 6. And now you know what we've hold of. It ain't you. Amen. When the church would get their eyes off themselves. Amen. Well, I thought we could do more. I, I just thought it would turn out different. I thought it would work out different. I've been preaching this for a while. and He heard me preach last night that way. But it's time we shake ourselves yeah. and get our eyes back on the Lord. Yeah. Because God's saying right here, Paul wrote to, to the, the church of Thessalonica, and he said, you know what it is that's holding. You know what holds that devil back. You know what it is. It is a spirit filled, Holy Ghost filled man or woman in that church. That is exactly what it is. That Holy Spirit's looking for a house. He's looking for a place where he can indwell. If he can indwell, he can set up power right there. Power over the enemy. Power over Satan. Power over every demon that would ever want to come upon the face of this earth. He just looks for a church. That's why he said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Because you've got to have power. That's why they pour it in the upper room. So there'll be power in their life. You can't just come to church once or twice and say, well, it don't fit. It ain't a shoe and you buy ten and a half or eleven. It's something that gets in you. And guess what? It will look at you and say, you fit. And it'll come into your life. My God, it'll fill you up with power from on high. And you'll be able to say no to the devil. For the mystery of iniquity do have already worked. What does that mean? Mystery of iniquity. Iniquity being sin. Mystery is concealed, hidden, not visible, not seen as of yet. That's why for thousands of years, I already told you a minute ago, the devil's been plotting. He's been scheming. Uh, old Calvary came and went. Oh, oh, death, where is thy victory? Oh, the grave, where is thy sting? Christ rose on the third day. Oh, and he took the keys from death, hell, and the grave. He took the keys. And then he told the church, I go away. Yes. My God, if I've been there that way, that day I've been on my knees begging, please don't leave me. Please don't leave me. Well, you, well, as long as I'm walking with you, I can cast out devils in your name. But you're going away. But he says, I won't leave you comfortless. Oh, no, the church don't. Hey, there, there ought to be some comfort again. I don't care what battle you're in. There ought to be something that lives in you that says, but I. says for that mystery of iniquity this has been coming to America Amen. Mm -hmm. the devil's been saying let's just wait let's just get a battle against the church uh -huh. oh we started over in England why is it everybody goes the way of England and then it goes on down to Canada it's right on our border yeah. oh it, it becomes a hate crime preachers and then all of a sudden just a little bit a little shot here and there how many remembers uh, where was it maybe Texas uh, some some mayor uh, wrote letters to the church we want copies uh, uh, of your sermons we want to we want to know the government wants to know what you're preaching in there because we don't want you to empower the people we want the power I'm telling you tonight there ought to be a place it's been coming for a long time. He didn't let him. He said, don't, don't, don't be deceived by any man. There must come a falling away first. Amen. For that son of perdition, that, that evil one. In, in the last few years, how many have heard this? You probably didn't hear it from a pulpit. 
That's what's sad. Praise God. But that enemy, haven't he's heard this? Lawlessness. Amen. I heard it on Fox News. Back when Ferguson was going on. Yes. Chicago was going on. Lawlessness. And I thought, you know, that's just like God. If that preacher won't preach from that pulpit no more, then God would just use the TV. He said, if my people won't praise him, I'll have the rocks to call out on him. And here they come, lawlessness, lawlessness. We're hearing biblical stuff from an unbiblical place. You know, how many knows that if God has to, he'll send an angel to preach the everlasting gospel that will fly across the sky. That's how much he loves his people. The Bible says the mystery of iniquity doeth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until be he be taken out of the way. Now look at verse 8. I won't preach much longer. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Yes. Whom the Lord shall consume. The Bible says in the book of Revelations, he knows his days are short. That's right. Whom the Lord shall consume with the Spirit. See? We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. That's right. We, we've got we've got terrorists that come with a sword. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. yes. That's scary Amen. enough. Yes, because it could be death. <laughs> and you know, I, uh, who was it? It was uh, oh, who's that guy? A singer. I, I can't remember, but, but but he sung a song. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. You ever heard that? Yes. I don't know. I agree with that. But I guess it made a, a hit song for him. I don't know. But but that's natural. But the weapons of our warfare are carnal, or they're not natural. But they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. They come with a sword. But what did David come? The name of the Lord. What is your sword? The Spirit of the Lord. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. That enemy does not have power over a Holy Ghost filled person. That enemy does not have power over a Holy Ghost filled church. You let begin to tarry again for God and nothing else. Strip me of my pastor. Strip me of every title. Strip me of everything that people identify with me with. And let me just be a child of the King. Oh. The brightness of His coming, even Him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And I read over there in Ephesians that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Amen. We wrestle against principalities yes. and wickedness in the high places. It's not the Congress or the House of Representatives. It's a spirit. That's right. It's the mind. That's Sorry. Right. He's been fighting us for a long time. He's been coming after us for a long time. But guess what? The church is still here. See, he didn't now let up with that until he'd be taken out of the way. You know what that really means? That that's why he said, I beseech you, brother, by the coming of Jesus Christ and by the gathering together unto him. Because what he's saying is that devil's being held back because the church has not left yet. That devil's been held back because there's not been a rapture yet. Oh my God, that Holy Ghost, he found him a house and he See, that's why he said that. It's not about will all the church quit. It's about the enemy can just go so far. That's why you can pick up the phone and say all hell is going on in my home. Will you pray? Because you know there's still hope. Because he didn't now let us. We'll let until he be taken.
taken out of the way. And when the church is called out, I wouldn't want to be here, would you? You think it's ugly now. You think it's bad now. Wait until the days of Noah when God told them to go into the ark and then God closed the door. And for seven days they sit there and people going out, please open the door. Let us come in. You let the church be raptured out of this world. Now run to that door looking through that window. Is there anybody in there? Is there anybody still in there? I'm telling you. That's the power of God. He did not let him will that until he be taken out of the way. We have victory. That's what I want to preach to you tonight. There's victory in Jesus. There's power in the church. Says, Fran, I wouldn't preach like this if I didn't believe it. You know my life. I, I just turned 50. She's known me for, I guess, 27 years as long as I've been married to her sister. That's Becky's sister and brother right there. And they know we're just plain, simple folks. I mean, if we get half a chance to sing someplace, we'll drive five more miles to sing one song. That, that's who we've always been. Get there and, and, and take eight or ten kids with us and load up a Suburban and, and drive for 300 miles. And then the pastor will take up a love offering. And after church, he'll hand me $16 and say, Brother, I hope this blesses you. And I'll say, Thank you very much because the Lord is my blessing. Oh, no! Yes, Lord. <laughs> See, there might be a falling away, but it ain't us. Mm. Oh, can't wait to see that brother Lonzo turn loose one of these nights. So to grab a hold of him. I remember one time I was working in my basement, and I was working on a light fixture. No matter what I did, I couldn't get the light to come on. I didn't know it, but the wire come loose. And it fell about halfway down the wall. And them wires were naked. And I sat there and I bent over three times. And every time I bent over, I hit that wire and I jumped straight back up. I thought it was my kids. You know, poking me with a, a, a nail or a screwdriver. I really did. I got aggravated at them. Stop it. Stop what? I sat there and trying to figure out why this lighting coming on. Bend over. That thing grabbed me again. You know the Holy Ghost just like that? Yeah. Oh, you won't know it. But you just bend over one of these in the days and praise. You just come to church and say he's good. He's good. And something will get a hold of you. Thank God it will change your life forever. Oh, God. That's what he done for me. Went to a church down in Korea. So now you remember me down there. Me and Becky had a youth group. They used to call me Spark Plug. They never knew when our last spark was going to hit, but when it hit. I, I remember one time they had a singing group down there. You might remember this. Me and Becky sitting together. We're sitting on a pew together. Man, it was like it hit us both at the same time. I jumped up, ran that way. She jumped up, ran that way. And we passed each other in the middle. Praise God. Don't tell me that I've fallen out of this thing. No, sir, because as long as I stand here, it holds that enemy at bay. Yes, it does. How many How many received this word tonight? That's why you're here. That's why you're here. Get that power down in your life. I didn't ask you to be saved. That, that, that's the Lord's business. All judgment given unto Him. I asked you, do you have power to tread on scorpions? Do you have power to drink any poisonous thing and it not harm you? The Bible says you'll take up serpents. Somebody here, your buddy was talking about a snake head on church. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about those snake spirits that come in and get on somebody and you got to pick them up and throw them out that door. But he said, these signs shall follow them that believe they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Yeah. We name this place the upper room. It's what God gave us. Amen. And we're going to tarry until we have power. Oh, yeah. See, things happen in the upper room. In the upper room, people get restored. That's right. In the upper room. Oh my God. There, I remember one that jumped up and said, These ain't drunk. Yeah. No, they ain't drunk. Not, not as you suppose. No, not, not the way you think. They, no, but he said, This is that that was prophesied by the prophet Joel that in the last days, the last days, Amen. the last days, you want to know what's going to happen in the last days? Read the book. Yeah. Take a look. 
He's going to pour out His Spirit. Oh, on all flesh. And your old men are going to dream dreams. How many of you still dream dreams? I dreamed a dream last night. Yes, I did. And the, and, 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 and the young men shall see visions. You still get visions? Because that's what happens when there's an outpouring. And then He said the sons and daughters shall prophesy. Amen. Oh, that does sound like somebody that the devil's defeated. Amen. <laughs> Right. No, I don't. Stand up for me tonight. Thank you, Lord. Becky, come. Yes, Lord. Get a soul ready. Yes, Lord. Somebody. Yes, Lord. Oh, praise God. I preached on that power. He did not let it will end until he'd be taken out of the way. I want to tell you something. That enemy, he's been scheming, he's been plotting. He's deceived many. He's deceived many. I wish I had time to turn to Revelation. I'm preaching there for a little while. That everybody would take the mark. He'll deceive everybody. The Bible says, I believe it, says everybody will take the mark whose name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Oh, hallelujah. There's something about having your name there because you belong to Him. And He indwells with you. There's power. You can't take a mark when you can stand there and tell them, no, I belong to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Every one day is going to bow and every mouth one day is going to confess that he is the Christ I've come to preach to you today that we must stand we must have power we must stand in this day Amen. I'm going to ask them to sing I'm just going to open up the altar tonight I'm not going to put any special thing on it we're going to talk about if you're here or there or way off. I'm just going to tell you, if you need more power, come and seek God for it. I can't give it to you. This church can't give it to you. But if you look for power from on high, something that's not natural, something that's supernatural, get your faith kicked back in the gear and start believing God for it. Something where you can go home and lay hands on somebody that's addicted and rebuke that drug and tell it no longer will you come into this house. If you're looking for power, you come tonight and pray while she sings.